the web, web analytics web part, so it's just basically doing a quick demonstration in the blog post of what it is and what coolness it can show you. But let's see, there we go. Um, let me go ahead and show. Let me share, share my other screen because um, there. All right. Um, and hope that nobody instant messages me while I'm uh, doing a demo. Okay. Here's the blog on my screen, and I was demoing the, the web analytics web part and what it can do, and then I've got a couple of good references in here of other people I know that have written other blog posts about the, the web analytics and what it can do, because there's a lot to it other than this just this one little web part. There's all the server-side web analytics stuff, and you can, there are also uh, reports that you can have automatically emailed to yourself through these uh, web analytics workflows that exist that Jennifer wrote about. So that's also some coolness. So um, I'll go ahead and flip over to my test site and I, I inserted this web analytics web part on the screen and I'll go ahead and just show you the settings and show you what you can tweak. And, and uh, it, you know, because it's a little misleading because when you see the word web analytics it doesn't really tell you much. So by default when you put this web part on the page it shows you your most viewed content. Now, oh, so I just clicked apply, so I'm waiting a second. So now this is a little messy, so I'll go ahead and uncheck some of these boxes before um, I show you what all those boxes do. So it's a little bit of a messy view because it shows you just a whole big long list of like URLs and partial URLs. So this is the most viewed content, and but it's really ugly. So it's just like these are the sites that people have been clicking on the most in your environment. And you can make it show however many items in the list you want to. It's just the most the most clicked on content. So it the most viewed viewed content is you know, it's kind of promising, but it's just not that pretty because it doesn't have the names of things, it just has the URLs. Of course, then if you had a whole bunch of document libraries called shared documents and it put the name on here, then it would just say shared documents, shared documents, shared documents down the page, and that wouldn't be very helpful either. So, um, so it just shows URLs. Um, when you pick the most viewed content, then you have the ability to say select your scope. So I want to see the most viewed content from this whole site collection, or just this site and the subsites you know below it or just this one site that I'm on and the list of libraries in it. So that's how you can pick your scope. And then period is just um, things that have been clicked on within what amount of time. So the seven days, are, so one day is the lowest you can put in here. Um, and then 180 days, that's like half a year, is the biggest amount of time you can put in here. And then the item limit is just how many items it's going to show up in the page. So I'll go ahead and change a couple of things. Only the preceding 24 hours, which I haven't, probably haven't clicked on much at all in the past 24 hours. So, um, and then only 10 items. So it looks like I've only clicked on four things in the past 24 hours either. So I'll change it back up to 30 days. And then, um, Jamise, tell me how much time I have because I'm just going <laughs> to ramble on. Um, I don't know how much time you I'm supposed to be spending on. Oh, okay. All right. Well, okay. So the better, the preferred thing to show in this web part that looks much nicer is your search queries. So I can do search, I can show common search queries that have been done on this site or searches that have been done in the whole search center. So whatever, um, Whenever people go to the search center, perform searches for like do all sites searches, that's uh, that's where those are going to come from. So you can pick just the site or search center sites. And when you do that, um, you can change the time period still, and you can change your item limit. When you do search center queries, you can even pick a specific type, like a people search or any scopes that you already defined. So these three scopes are just the, this is just my test environment. These are just the default scopes. But, you know, say, say you've created your own custom scopes, you can make it just show, like if I have a, and I think I use this example in the blog post, if I've created like a, a whole website called company policies and everybody goes, knows to go there to find company policies and I've created a new scope in my search administration that is just comprised of company policies, then I can actually put 
pick that scope here, and then I could call the web part like um, popular company policies or something like that, and then it would show those those links here. So it would be the, the most clicked on things. So let me go ahead and flip it over to I flipped it over to people search and click apply. Let's see if I've searched for any people. No, I haven't searched for any people in the past. Let me see if I've searched for any people in my test environment in the past uh, 180 days. No, okay, so I'll just put it on all site. I'm just going to put it on this one site because I know I've got some results in here. And go ahead and click apply. And then, so these are the words that I've used. So now you perform the search, and then you actually click on the word for it to show here. So if I just search for a word and just look at a page full of things and don't click on any of it, it's not going to count here. So if you go back and try to test this out, you're not only typing the word and performing the search, you're actually clicking on something in that list of results. Um, so I have all these little check boxes I can check. And I'm going to go ahead and click several of these here. There's a question for you, Laura, um, from Mark. Oh, okay. If, if search scope is grayed out, search then scope is grayed out. Oh, if search scope is grayed out, um, then if you search, click choose search center, then it will ungray itself. But if it's maybe if you don't have a search center, Mark, I don't know. Can Mark? Can you speak up? Let me see. Are you unmute, can, unmute him? Let me unmute Mark. Sure. Oh, Mark, you can, yep, there you go. Yeah, actually, when I change it to search center queries, it ungrades search scope. Yeah, because there's no search scope on your just your site. Okay, gotcha. Thank only you. search scopes only apply to your search center, yeah. Okay, so um, I've got frequency, which is how many times that thing was clicked on, and then popularity rank is this number here. So, like, these both were clicked on twice, so they're ranked as number one, and then... These were clicked on one times for, for some, they're number three, so it looks like some of these things that I filtered out down here might be the number twos. So um, it was just kind of messy stuff that I didn't really want to show in there. So you can filter items out by putting a comma in between the keywords that you don't want to show there. And so I filtered things out that were ranked as number two that would have, I mean, yeah, that would have had a two next down the left column. And so it's just skipping number two. So that's interesting to note. Okay, so the frequency is the number beside it in the parentheses. The popularity rank is the uh, rank down the left, like the numbering. And then the popularity rank trend is this little icon that it puts down the right side. So I'll, uh, it shows that it's something new that's appearing in this uh, web part. So maybe if you're, look, you're staring at this web part every single day and something jumps out as new, you'll... It will, it will alert you to notice that people have been clicking on that more often. It's like a new thing that's, that's trending. So I un, unchecked show popularity rank trend, and all those new boxes went away. And if I check it again, um, it, will, it will show like a little green arrow going up for things that are increasing in their popularity, and I'll think show the little green new next to things that are new in there. And I believe that it's based on your... Um, your indexing, like when you do a full index, it appears that it changes everything back to new. But every time you do an incremental uh, crawl, it, it it that's when it looks to see what things are new that are included in this uh, search result. So I, I I performed a full crawl just I think yesterday, so that's why everything showed as new. So that's interesting to notice too. All right, so user title and user department. I'll go ahead and just check both of those. And this is really cool because it's, it lets you ba basically see who is searching for what. So I'm a consultant. These are some of the job titles that it's pulling from Active Directory from the people who are performing the searches. So if you have an accurate Active Directory with accurate job titles, you can quickly like look to see what people are searching for. I can see that people with the title consultant, which is really just me on this test site, are looking for these things. And if you have a CEO, it would say president, and you'd say, oh, this is what the president's looking for. Huh, I wonder why he's looking for that, you know. <laughs> so that's where, that's where you can filter by job title. And then departments, I think in just our little test environment, we just have um, 
pretty much most everybody's in the SharePoint department, whatever that means. And uh, you can see people in the department searching for something. So I've actually um, I said, well, huh, this looks pretty useful. I want to be able to show just whatever the logged in person, whatever job title they have, I just want them to see stuff that other consultants are searching for or stuff that other people in their department are searching for. So that's what I'm actually blogging about right now. I'm in the middle of writing a blog post. What most popular searches, searches relevant to me about how you can do that. So I don't think you want me to talk anymore, but <laughs> that's kind of where I am with that because I was intrigued to see the, you know, the job title and department and I wanted to figure it out further. Is that uh, any 